both Chuzo Wilson and Harry Hess were geologists. I think Chuzo was a bit of a geophysicist, I think, or structural geologist. But you know, I was about the only person they could speak to in a way. I mean, they were, I'm sure they didn't want interest in talking to Dan. Well, perhaps they were. I don't oh yes, know. No, I had long did discussions you, with Chuzo. Really? Yes, oh, right. yes, I did. Okay. Yes. Um, yes. And I think the most. I mean, a lot happened. Uh, a, it's a very long story. Chuzo came in in January, and and Harry within within weeks. Um, and it was during this time that Chuzo, I'll leave a lot out here in terms of the origin of transform forms, but he developed the concept of transform forms. And importantly, he named them transform forms and he extrapolated from ridge ridge transform forms, which a number of us had recognized already, to transform forms in general. And he did a brilliant job in part of naming them and particularly in formulating all the different possibilities in terms of what we now call plate boundaries, in terms of subduction zones and ridges. And of course he then traced around what we now call plate boundaries. He, and interestingly, you know, Dan, at the beginning of his paper on transform faults, he uses the word plates. Yes. Do you yes. realise that? Yes. Because yes. people were asking, yes. you know, where plates came yes. in and where plate tectonics came in. Anyway, yes. 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 I don't think Absolutely. he used plate tectonics, but he used plates. Which he used plates, but not plate tectonics. I still don't know where plate tectonics No, exactly. <laughs> I was accused of inventing it once, which I don't think is true. Um, in chasing it around the world, he recognised that the San Andreas is a transform fault, for example. These major continental transforms like the San Andreas and the Alpine Fault in New Zealand. Now, when he came to the San Andreas, he sort of came up <laughs> the Gulf of California, uh, almost literally, with um, the ridge crest being offset on transforms, and then it ran out to the north at Cape Mendocino. And then the seismicity largely cut out, it just didn't continue, and the seismicity then picked up again once you got on, onto the coast of, of Canada, the Queen Charlotte Islands area, the major system of faults. And the logic of his idea was that if, if you had an offset like that in the seismicity, which presumably reflected transforms, then there must be a ridge in be be linking them. And this is what we now call the Juan de Fuca Ridge off Washington and Oregon. It would have been discovered earlier or recognized as a ridge had the bathymetry, the detailed bathymetry, there's very detailed bathymetry available, but it'd be classified because it was um, obtained by the American military in relation to submarine work. They needed detailed bathymetry, they needed detailed gravity field. But in doing that work off the western coast of North America, they'd done some very extensive work in those two fields, the bathymetry and the gravity. They'd also measured magnetic. Well, they hadn't. Somebody suggested at Scripps that you put a magnetometer on board while they were doing this very detailed survey. And people like Ron Mason, who was a graduate student at the time, I think, was one of the hacks who had to right. operate the right. magnetometer for right. weeks or months on end. Anyway, in that way, they acquired all the magnetic data. The magnetic data was released because the military were not interested in it. So, when, and, and Harry Hess, who was a admiral or something, some sort of admiral, yes, he was an admiral. in the Navy, uh, uh, American uh, Navy, rare, uh, because uh, of his, uh, uh, he was uh, lieutenant uh, commander uh, or whatever during the war, um, he he said, when Chuzo was explaining to us this, this predicted ridge off Washington and Oregon, Chuzo, Harry said, well, I had to remove his cigarette to start with, but you know, he said, he said uh, um, if you're going to put a ridge there, there's all this magnetic data. I mean, if Fred's right, it, it should, there should be some expression of this ridge in, in the magnetic data. Well, this was down in the room you were talking about where... where Harry never used the room, actually, because he uh, wasn't enough. <laughs> Chuzo had filled it. I don't know where Harry went. I think he worked at Hamilton. But um, we were downstairs in that room, and so I shot upstairs to the library because I knew exactly what I wanted. It was from the Bulletin of the Geological Society of America in 61, where these maps were published, detailed contour maps and summary maps on this, across this Juan de Fuca Ridge. And I can't remember that I looked at it before I went downstairs to them, but I laid it out in front of them, the three of us, and... Uh, um, jaws dropped because there were linear magnetic anomalies paralleling this ridge that, that Chuzo had postulated. And uh, as I say... And symmetric about it. And symmetric. That was the crucial which thing. Which we'd never which seen everybody before. Everybody had missed that. Uh, I mean, it's been in the uh, literature for, for what, by that time? Uh, oh, seven, four years, yeah, four least, or five years. Yes, at least. And nobody yeah. noticed the symmetry about the axis no, until no, you did that. Quite, quite extraordinary, yeah. absolutely yeah. extraordinary. 